How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we're going to be talking about driving tips for driving your RV. We get questions about what are some of the best practices and so we're going to be answering those and going through what we do to safely drive our RV to enjoy that RVing experience. So let's dive right into our list and the first one is going to be knowing your route and we're going to break that into uh, three separate sections of knowing your route before you even get behind the wheel. So when planning out your route, this is going to be different depending on the different size rig that you have. Uh, the safe and easiest bet is to get one of those standalone RV GPSs uh, that you can just place in your car and you can put in the dimensions of your vehicle. And it's going to keep you off the roads that you shouldn't be on, that you would get stuck and put yourself in a predicament you don't want to try and be in. I'll put a link down in the description to some of the more popular RV GPSs that are out there. So this is going to, a device like this is gonna help you plan out your route so that you can get from uh, point A to point B and not have any issues. Now, if you don't want to buy an RV specific GPS, we, we actually don't have one. Uh, there are some other tools that you can do to keep you on the right path and not down the wrong road. What we do is we use a couple of apps on our phone. Uh, we use this one called Truck Map. Uh, it's actually been pretty good. I kind of run it through some tests to see if it's gonna send me down the wrong road. The Truck Map is a free app and it actually does well routing you around uh, that difficult section of the road. So um, this is meant for truckers. So you're able to put in like an RV specific GPS, the size of your rig, and it's going to um, usually do a pretty good job keeping you off those bridges, the, the low clearances and tunnels, uh, and routing you the proper way. Um, it's a little bit clunky when you're using it, this app. Uh, so we've also found one that I I've liked, but it has a few shortcomings and it's the co-pilot GPS. Now the reason I mentioned this one even though it's still not a 100% complete solution that I like is it's a lot easier to navigate. You can download the maps onto here so if you lose cell service you still have the maps on your phone which is nice. It works really well. It works the way a GPS should work. It's just easy to use. You can change um, what you want at the bottom if you want it to tell you how long it's going to take you to get there, how many miles you have to go. Um, it has all those things that you can customize right into it. So uh, the RV side of this GPS, they have a different, few different levels of the, the app. Uh, the RV specific one, the thing that I don't like about it is they stop the dimensions at, uh, I believe, 48 feet long for your RV. Now that sounds like a crazy big RV, but if you have a uh, fifth wheel that's 35 feet long, and then you add that with your tow vehicle, or you have a travel trailer that's around that size, maybe 32 feet with, with the truck that you're pulling it with, uh, you can go over that dimension very easily. So that's the only shortcoming that I saw for the RV specific one. If you have a really long rig, you have to go to the trucker app, and then on the trucker app, you might have a hard time putting in your proper weight just because those trucks are usually meant to be um, over 26,000 pounds. So. Um, it's a good app and it has performed well, uh, but those are just a few of the things that I've seen using that. So the gist is if you're gonna be planning your route with these devices, make sure that you're able to put in your specific vehicle size and it'll help keep you out of trouble. Now, if you don't wanna go the digital route, there's also atlases out there, like people will use the, the Rand McNally truck atlas so that uh, it'll give you approved routes that are meant for big rigs. Those are some of the best three options that you can have um, while you're routing on the fly. Now, some people like to plan out their route on the desktop and there's some websites and some applications that, that help you do that. But find out your route to where you can get there safely from point A to point B uh, and not have any issues and you can stay on the right road. So that's number one on planning your route. Number two, uh, a couple other apps that we like to use is uh, know your weather from where you're going to be from point A to point B again. And we like to use this app called Highway Weather. So uh, you can put in your where you're starting from and where you're ending and it'll give you the weather for each point along your route and it can give it to you in a, a list form or you can look at it on a map and it'll give you your temperature, your wind speed, and the percentage of precipitation. And those are the main three things that I want to know about when I'm planning my route. I like this app because it gives you a, a little slider at the bottom. If you want to leave tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, you can adjust that and it'll give you the weather 
sliding the time for for that current time it'll even give you a recommended time to leave so that the weather is best for you so that's a pretty handy app so number three on that list of knowing your route is we like to figure out where we're going to get diesel fuel uh, before we begin our route and so we know how much of a range our truck can go to where we feel comfortable looking for fuel in that price range or in that range and then we'll kind of look at it by price. For instance, like when we left Arizona, we knew if we filled up in Arizona, just skipped New Mexico completely and filled up in Texas, we were able to get the best price. And knowing the range of your vehicle, knowing if you can go 250 miles or 300 miles, um, you can look, this is my starting point, this is where I'm going to end up, but I probably need to fill up somewhere in the middle. So find that place that you wanna fill up so that you don't get stuck out in the middle of nowhere where there's no fueling station. And again, the app that we like to use for this is called Gas Buddy. And it, it'll give you a good indication on where you can get fuel, what the gas prices are going to be. You could look at it in a map, you could look at it in a list, and it helps you find uh, whether you're looking for gas or diesel to be able to find the fuel that you need along your route. So let's move to driving tips while you're actually behind the wheel and driving. And some of these things are gonna become uh, easier as you get more practice and as you spend more time behind the wheel and for the size of your rig. But my first recommendation is to mind your corners. When you're going around corners with a, a big fifth wheel or a big RV, um, when you're making that, that turn and you're coming in, your back wheels are gonna kinda cut that corner and so where you might think in the front that you have plenty of room, remember you got a, a much bigger vehicle behind you and that corner's going to cut in. And also on the flip side, the opposite side of the vehicle, uh, if you're coming up and you're going to make a sharp turn, say you're leaving a, a gas pump, um, which we actually did this when we first started out. Uh, if you're leaving a gas pump and you pulled up pretty close to it and then you turn sharply away from it, your tail is going to swing out in that direction. And that tail swing could, if you're too close to uh, a gas pump or a wall or something like that, it can swing out and make contact. You can get uh, tail swings like uh, 30 inches or more. Uh, so you wanna be aware of that. So when you're going around corners, leave plenty of room on the inside, leave enough room for tail swing. If you're making a sharp corner, uh, mind your corners when you're going around them. That's a real brief description for the off-tracking and the uh, tail swing. Uh, we're going to save going into depth in that later when we talk about backing up your travel trailer or your fifth wheel uh, for another video. I just don't want this to go extremely crazy long and uh, there's a lot to cover there and I don't want you to miss it. So uh, we'll save that for another video. Uh, back to it. Next is kind of a good rule of thumb and it's just plan things earlier. If you need to, to merge over, if you need to uh, prepare to exit or make a left turn or a right turn, uh, be ready to try and plan ahead of that earlier just because your bigger vehicle is gonna be harder to change lanes, it's gonna be harder to move over to exit and oftentimes people aren't gonna wanna let you in because they don't wanna be behind the, the bigger RV. So keeping my eyes further down the road than I traditionally would in say a car, uh, just watching for those brake lights because braking is even gonna take longer, um, watching for those lane closures that might be happening if you're going through a city and on freeways, kind of planning ahead earlier and watching further down the road, just being more attentive is going to be a good rule of thumb. Now when I'm driving in traffic, one of the things, one of the tools that I have come accustomed to uh, that I didn't think I necessarily would is a backup camera. We RV'd for two years without a backup camera, so it's definitely doable, uh, but then we've been using one for a little bit and just the other day when we made the, the trip across Texas into San Antonio, uh, I had issues with our 12 volt socket and it wasn't working and so I realized how much I actually came accustomed to using it and how much I appreciated having that extra view behind our RV. The one we have is from Halo View and it's a wireless one. It was just easier with it being a fifth wheel and a truck uh, to be able to have a, a wireless one so I don't have one more thing that I have to plug in later. So um, it was actually really easy to install. I removed one of the uh, running lights off of the RV and I just put it in that place. And I used the power so that when we're in the truck, if I wanna turn on the camera, I just turn on our running lights and uh, it turns the camera on. Also, when we put it in, we put a, a, a longer antenna. So 
Uh, it's a magnetic antenna that we were just able to put halfway through the RV just because our rig is so long. I didn't want to have any issues with it being jittery or, or cutting out. Uh, I just wanted a nice strong signal. Uh, it's been very dependable and it's, it's worked well. Now at first I kind of struggled on where to place it um, just because of the size of it. It is pretty large which is nice. It's a nice big screen but I didn't like it anywhere on the dash. It was just too big. I, that's kind of my own personal pet peeve is I don't like things on the dash really when I'm driving. So I tried it anywhere there. I tried it up by the rear view mirror. I was gonna try and mount it up there. I didn't like that either. It was just, it was too big. But because of the size, it actually worked well putting it down low. And I used a couple pieces of Velcro to tie up the, the wires and keep everything nice and clean. And those pieces of Velcro actually hold it really steady while we drive down there. So here's a couple of things that I liked about it. I liked actually ended up liking the size of the screen, even though it didn't work on the dash. Uh, because it's so large, so crisp, and so bright, uh, just a quick glance down, I'm able to get a good snapshot of if it's clear behind us or if it's not clear behind us. If there's enough room uh, so I can move over and not cut anybody off, um, it gives me that in a real clear picture right away. And really that's the main reason that I would want a, a rear view camera is to know, is it safe to move over and what is going on behind me? So uh, it does that extremely well. This one actually has a lot of other things that it can do. You, you can record while you drive. Uh, to to an SD chip and you can put that on your computer later. It does audio. Um, I turned the audio off just because I found it distracting while I was driving. It has a bunch of different settings and menus, but it does a good job giving me a, a snapshot of what's behind me and it makes changing lanes and planning to move over uh, just that much easier. And so that's that's why we use it and that's why I've kind of become addicted to it. I'll put a link down in the description to this camera. Uh, Halo View did send this to me to check out and uh, see what I thought of it. And uh, I have enjoyed using the backup camera. But moving on to another tip is uh, don't try and push it. Don't try and get there too fast. Enjoy the trip as you go. Uh, some of the biggest reasons that people have a blowout is the rig might be overweight, their tires might be uh, underinflated, and a big one that people don't often think about is going too fast for your tires. Uh, a lot of RV tires aren't rated for a high rate of speed. So knowing the, the speed that your tires are rated at and keeping it at or below that is going to be much safer while you're driving your RV. Now this next one should have been thought about when you were planning your route, but the last question you you want to ask when you're driving down the road is and you see a sign for a height requirement is how tall are we so know that before you get behind the wheel and you should use that when you're planning out your route you don't want to be going underneath a bridge that's going to be too low for your rv we've come close uh, up to them and we've had to back up on the road to find another route um, so you want to know the height of your RV so you don't run into any kind of a bridge. The last one is kind of for people that might be like me if you get tired when you're driving long distances is uh, I like to just snack on a little something like I'll just grab some peanuts and I'll just uh, eat peanuts slowly so uh, doing something like that keeping yourself occupied. Chris loves to read books while we drive and she reads them out loud to the family um, so you can do that or you can listen to books on CD, something to kind of keep you, you alive and awake while you're driving and alert to the road. So these are the driving tips that we usually give people that are new to RVing and getting ready to hit the road. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, uh, we got more videos about technical stuff and newbie stuff, uh, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video. Yeah.